Porsche opened an order book in 2018 for a new and very special car and once committees had decided the chosen few owners they promptly closed their book again. Their new car would be called Speedster. Just 1948 units were built for the whole world in homage to the original Porsche's year of release and today I have the key to this extra rare heritage design edition Speedster and I really think you should join me, Roger Bailey, to find out what it's like. The Speedster harks back to a time in the 1950s when Porsche first wowed sports car enthusiasts with their groundbreaking 356 Speedster. And today we can see how far Porsche has gone to with this 991 generation car in order to properly celebrate the company's long heritage. Look closely at our striking heritage design example to see thoughtful details like gold lettering for the Speedster badges on the buttresses and on the rear end that look further and you'll spot that the Porsche shields on the nose, the wheels and the steering wheel are all the old original 1948 shield design. Keep going to notice the carbon ceramic brakes have been treated to black paint rather than the common yellow paint. The lowered windscreen surround has a satin black finish and the side glass is cut down to suit the low roof line. Note more of the aforementioned gold script lettering here inside where we find a gold plaque which is engraved with each model's production number and which also proudly announces Porsche's 70 year anniversary. And look at this distinctive low profile fabric roof which resembles a bimini cover with flying tie lines giving an unusual low rider look and with this being a modern Porsche this roof is properly sealed against all weather conditions. Then of course, this rear deck is clearly the Speedster's main signature feature with its double bubble panel moulded from carbon fibre. And to reassure us, this is not just all a styling exercise, the front wings and the bonnet are also made from carbon fibre to add lightness and to add speed, serious speed, which we are going to talk about shortly. Stepping back to admire the Speedster, it's clear to me we have the most hunkered down 911 with the most iconic of Porsche silhouettes. To develop this modern day Speedster, the Zuffenhausen designers handed their concept over to Porsche's Hallow GT engineering division who forged its mechanicals out of the GT3, meaning it has the steering, suspension and engine from one of the world's greatest high performance cars, all finished off with a short throw manual gearbox. So what's it like to drive a speedster on superb roads like these? And what about all that speed? It will come as no surprise to hear that this is one of the very best driver's car out there. It's a GT3 convertible designed to excite your senses with razor sharp steering, a cracking gear change, otherworldly handling, enormous grip and trigger throttle response. There are no turbos here, just instantaneous kick in the back from the motorsport derived 510 brake horsepower flat six, which is only got to propel 1400 kilograms of mass. So you want to hear this engine? Yeah. Okay, headphone wearers be warned, loud noises are about to follow. This latest GT engine was first released in 2018 and is new and is the engine that will power next year's 992 GT3. Fettled with new individual throttles, a high pressure fuel injection system and an exhaust that uses a new bonding technique and thinner metals to allow it to weigh 10 kilograms less than the previous GT3's exhaust. And they've managed that despite the addition of a pair of now mandatory particulate filters. <laughs> This is engineering alchemy, and the GT department did not stop there, upping the power at the same time to that 510 brake horsepower, 470 newton meters of torque. 
As my time spent with this car moves on, I'm sensing the fire and brimstone noises of, say, a GT3 RS may have been lessened by a fraction here by those emission filters. The raucous cabin noise softened by a degree by the cockpit design and roof components in the same sort of way the less voluminous Boxster cockpit is quieter than a Cayman cabin. The upshot being is we have a fractionally softer experience. It's subtle and it's only a small difference and it isn't noticeable when indulging oneself in a fire and brimstone motorsport style of driving. But of course not many will use their speedster for motorsport or even track days. Open top motoring on open roads is this car's primary reason for being. So without an electrically operating mechanism, how tricky is this roof to open and close? Well, I'm happy to report that it's a simple process for one person to perform alone. And here's a demonstration I prepared earlier. So operate the sensor button with the familiar Porsche way. The two flying buttresses flick up like a surprise Chihuahua's ears and the rear clicks open. Lift the paper light rear deck and flop the assembly into the receiving recess. Just be careful not to trap your fingers. Re-erecting is a straightforward reverse process. Just avoid doing this in a high wind lest one might lose one's rather large carbon fibre panel to the elements. Are there any downsides with the speedster? Well, we can see there is no boot space. The interior is from a previous era when compared with new cars from the 2020s and there's a certain amount of interior noise when on the move. But complaining about these things is like complaining about wind noise on a motorbike. The 911 speedster exhibits all the beauty and delicacy of a roofless special with the capability and strength of a Porsche GT product buried only just beneath its skin. Yes, today you could probably buy a GT3 plus a GT3 RS plus a convertible boxer for the price of just one Speedster. But head to a track or a car meeting these days and you'll find plenty of GT3s and GT3 RSs. So rocking up in this rare beast will make you feel different and may even make you feel a little bit outlandish. I just hope those lucky people who have chosen to own a Speedster at least sample it on decent roads and experience open top days like these where driving feels otherworldly. I really hope those fortunate owners don't take their Speedster's swelling value as an excuse to lock it away in a vault. Past Speedsters were not traditionally the 911 of choice for those who enjoy hard driving, far more they were chosen to be seen in when driving. But this Speedster is different. This is a driver's car, first and foremost, a car to beat up a B-road. It's a winning track day weapon. It's a GT car that also happens to be a glorious convertible cruiser. One which has a totally distinctive and unique look about it. It's not only the very last 991 generation 911. It's also one of the very, very best. What we have just driven here today is a piece of automotive history. A car so rare, most are destined to dwell in private car collections that we have been allowed today to discover the Speedster to be one of the world's greatest driver's cars is testimony to its owner's generosity and to have been able to properly use an object of this value, just as Herr Porsche would have intended back in 1948. Well, that bit. That bit is priceless. So good, so good. Uh, so but good. it feels good when you jump on it. Scars on my chest like you own it. You can have my last name if you want it. If you want it. If you want it. Dear girl, we don't even have to stop it. Take you higher than a real rocket. You can have my last name if you want it. If you want it. If you want it, but damn it feels good when you jump on it. Scars on my chest like you own it. You can have my last name if you want it. If you own it, if you want it, dear girl, we don't even have to stop it. Take you higher than